things that we talked about this morning was just a brief rundown in the differences between something being relatively elastic and relatively inelastic. Now, we're going to spend a good chunk of a later unit on this. Um, we're going to look at different types of elasticities and, and how that plays out with given markets. Um, but just to run through some of the stuff that you had before, you know, to refresh your minds, I'm going to go through this again. What we did in macro was look at price elasticity of demand, meaning how responsive is the demand curve, the quantity demanded, to a change in price. Now, we have two basic options here if we're boiling this down to the essentials. We have, that's not real straight, but it doesn't really matter. We have a relatively inelastic curve, which means that it's much more vertical. And next to this guy, we can throw up here a relatively elastic curve, which is much more horizontal. We've got market A. And over here, we can just call this guy market B. Or we can name him Fred. Fred and Bob are relatively elastic and inelastic markets. Anyway, all right. Now, one of the things that you're going to have to do is differentiate which type of products would be more likely to be in each of these markets. Now, there are several categories that we can put up here. The easiest one is to say, is it a necessity or a luxury? For a product which is a necessity, meaning you have to have it pretty much, you know, with cost being irrelevant, you have to have it no matter what it costs, we would expect that to be more price inelastic. Meaning, even if the price goes up, the amount that you buy is not going to be reduced very much, if at all. Something like insulin, for example. That's a classic example that shows up all the time in multiple choice questions like this. Okay, Because if someone is diabetic and they have to have insulin to live, then if the price changes by, say, 5, 10, 15 percent, can they buy less of it? No, you have to have what you have to have. So that would be a luxury. If we're talking about um, whole milk for people with young children, well, that's what you're supposed to buy if you have young children. If we had a run on milk and the price went up by 20 percent, is there a good substitute for that? No, you got to have what you got to have. Okay, necessities over here, luxuries over here. Um, if, for example, you're talking about the difference between a $70,000 car and a $50,000 car, you know, for some people the $50,000 car would be a luxury. But what happens is if the price of the $70,000 car, $70, car goes up 10%, that's seven grand. You would expect people to react to that by buying fewer of them. You know, even if you're in the market for that, we would expect people to react because that's not something that you can't live without. It's a luxury. So necessity luxury is the first dividing line with these two. Another thing that we can say about it is if a product has very few to no substitutes, like insulin, for example, no substitutes, few substitutes, relatively price inelastic, lots of substitutes over here. Because what do you do? If the price goes up, you buy the substitute. If they're really substitutes, then that means that they're comparable in quality and you can trade them off. It's no big deal. So, few substitutes, necessities over here. The next thing that we can talk about with this is long run, short run. In the short run, where you do not necessarily have a market that is able to react to the forces that will cause the price to be very high, you're going to be relatively inelastic. In the long run, when people have more time to adjust, when you might have more substitutes developed, you get a market that's relatively elastic. If we're talking, for example, about an iPod, okay? iPod has substitutes, but they're not really considered comparable for most people. iPod's probably over here. If you're talking about the iPad, which apparently doesn't do a whole lot, 
um, comparatively speaking, relatively speaking, you're probably over here. Um, in the long run, you know, the gotta gotta have it product will have patents run out, for example. You'll have more time for other people to come up with something that you could use instead. Or maybe in the long run, it, you know, the trend is over, nobody wants it anymore, you're over here. So we've got short run and long run. Those are three of the big ones right there. Now, another one that you might see is a difference between a product category and a name brand. If we're talking, for example, about toilet paper, toilet paper is something that presumably you got to have relatively inelastic. If you really never about, have been camping, have you? <laughs> okay, we're moving not, right along. We're not talking about in certain, you know, moving right along circumstances. Uh, but the product category we put here. Now, if you're talking about a particular brand that has lots of substitutes, you put that over here. One of the ones we talked about today was socks. If you're wearing socks, if, are there a lot of substitutes for socks? I mean, okay, you could put bread bags on your feet. Probably not your favorite thing to do. Socks here. You know, go to Target or Walmart sometimes sometime and look at all the adjectives on the bags of socks that they sell. It's a little bit ridiculous. Any given one of those over here. Because while you don't have a lot of substitutes for the product category, say shoes, you might have a lot of substitutes over here for, you know, Nike brand men's size 12 white cross trainer things. Okay? The more specific you get, the more elastic it tends to be. So that's the kind of stuff that you need to keep in mind. And I'll go through it one more time. Necessities, short run, brand cat or I'm sorry, product categories, and now I'm losing one. I'm losing it. Don't ask me, I just run the camera. Um, Necessities, uh, general product categories, uh, anything in the short run, and not a lot of substitutes. Not a lot of substitutes. Over here, um, luxuries. Luxuries, long run, lots of substitutes, individual brand names. 